Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today I want to share with you a bit of a personal story of my involvement in id Software's Final Doom 25 years ago this week. 25 years ago this week Final Doom was released. Yep, 25 years on. Wow. But how did this 20-something year old Aussie guy get to be part of that release? It's an interesting story. When Doom 1 and then Doom 2 came out in the early 90s, it was, firstly, a great game. If you like the run around shoot 'em up type games, which I do. But one of the great things about Doom is you could actually edit the levels and create your own. And there was a huge realm of sites out there that distributed them and shared them and reviewed them and played them. One of the places most of those editors got together in those days was the Doom Editors mailing list. Now you gotta remember, this was the early 90s, the early days of the internet. Just about everybody still had dial-up, me included at home. Mailing lists were the best way to communicate with a bunch of people. But we set up a breakaway group from that list with the lofty goal of recreating all 32 levels of Doom 2 plus new music and releasing it as one big pack. We wanted to do it right and we formed a group we called Team TNT. To be honest, I'm not even sure what TNT stood for. It was a long time ago. It was a giant project and took us months because we really did want to do it right. As I said, it was the early days of the internet, so we were having to FTP files backwards and forwards, and occasionally I would get on the IRC chat to communicate directly with people. But the time zones made that pretty difficult. If you're not familiar with IRC, it's kind of the predecessor to the open online chats with things like Discord, and I did an episode about that up here. Time zones definitely made it interesting. It was helpful in some ways because I could complete a level, FTP it up to the main servers, and then go to bed. While I was in bed, the guys could download it, test it, try it, and do the full quality assurance run on it before giving me some feedback to work on the next day. Of course, I did have a full-time job at the time working for RMIT University, which was handy because I had great internet access, but also did take up a fair bit of time as well. Not to mention being newly married, I'm not sure how Bernie put up with me. Interestingly enough, I noted a few years later that while creating some of the Star Wars movies, they made use of that same technique. They'd shoot all day in the US, ship the files to Australia and have them worked on overnight and have a rough cut the next morning so that they could see what they needed to shoot again the following day. As I said, we had this pretty stringent QA process. We really wanted this done right. There were lots of levels out there that you could download but many of them were, frankly, crap. There's a lot of work to do to make sure all of your textures are aligned and straight. There weren't any weird gaps and that anybody could play through it at the various different levels of difficulty and make it fun. But we finally pulled all 32 levels together and mine was listed at level 26. So it was one of the harder levels near the finish. But then, the day before we were about to release it free on the internet, John Romero from id Software made contact with the team and offered to buy the whole lot. That was a huge shock for us and for the community. For us, it was, woohoo, we'll be part of something huge. For the community, it was a bit of a bummer because this thing that they'd been hearing about for months wasn't going to be released to them free, and we did cop a bit of flack for that. In the end, the fee negotiated was 38925 US dollars. I'm not sure how they came to that amount, but that's what happened. For many of us, it was quite a staggering amount of money, although in reality, considering what they probably sold it for, it was pittance. Not that I harbour any grudges for that. The original intention of Final Doom is that it would fill the gap between the release of Doom 2, which had been a couple of years ago, and the upcoming release of Quake. Unfortunately, the legal process of getting 44 people or something like that to sign legal documents in 14 different countries and pull it all together took quite a bit longer than we intended. In the end, somehow it only got released a week before Quake, which was pretty disappointing for us, and I think probably for them. But they were probably both trying to hit the June school holidays in the Northern Hemisphere. For my part, I ended up with something like 700 Australian dollars, which was huge in those days. I also got two copies of the software, of which I have one left. Who knows where the other one ended up. I also got this t-shirt with the 
Final Doom logo on it. It also has member of Team TNT, creators of Final Doom on the sleeve, so it's fairly unique in that respect. It was a fun project and a really great experience. I really did learn so much about collaboration in those really early days of the internet. Just for a bit of a laugh, I thought I'd pull out the old game and give it a run. Now the great thing about software from 25 years ago is it runs on just about anything, if it will run at all. As it stands, the installed version is for Windows 95 and won't actually run on a Windows 10 computer. But there are lots of ports out there of the Doom engine to more modern operating systems. And I found Chocolate Doom, which was designed to be a vanilla type Doom and then upgraded to Chocolate and managed to get it to run on that. As I said, it was a crappy old computer and I didn't spend a lot of time setting it up. But here's me running through the first three quarters of level 26 of TNT Evolution.
I hope you enjoyed that. Question of the day, have you even heard of Final Doom? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. 
learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older episodes you may not have seen before here and here. And you can subscribe to the channel by clicking down here and our mailing list by clicking up here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next episode.